That's right, My Little Pony. Some people hate it, some people love it. Either way, at least everyone has heard of My Little Pony in some fashion of reality. Hey guys, how's it going? Quick Freeze 4 here, back again with another video. And today, I want to talk about card games. That's right, My Little Pony has released a CCG card game, which stands for Collectible Card Game. And, you know... I love card games. I absolutely really love card games. I play Magic, I play Yu-Gi-Oh!, I play Pokemon, but now, as I already mentioned, My Little Pony has a collectible card game. So I picked up these two decks, the Twilight Sparkle and Rainbow Dash Starter Deck, and I gotta say, I'm kinda impressed with this game already. I played a few games with a few friends of mine, so I decided... Hey, why not do a video and kind of do like a detail overview and maybe like a how to play uh, the My Little Pony uh, CCG card game because I kind of read the instructions myself and I was a little confused. So I figured maybe some other people uh, might be confused as well. So uh, yeah, this is going to be like kind of like a how to play the card game and maybe guys, um, who knows, maybe you like to pick up this game and try it for yourself so if not that's cool but if you do right on so let's go ahead let's get started and I'll show you how the game is played Alright guys, as I already said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to do an in-depth overview or a how to play the My Little Pony collectible card game. The main goal of this game is to be the first player to collect 15 points by either solving problems or by defeating troublemakers and villains. Now what you see before you is the playmat. Each player will have one, as well each player will have a main character. Each player will also have a turn card and a scoring card. Each player will also have their respectable decks as well as a problem deck. Now I'm going to show you each individual card type and tell you what they do and what they mean. So the first card I'm going to show you guys is the main character card. In this case I'm going to choose Applejack. And one of the things you're going to notice in the top right is the power value. This is the amount of power that they lend themselves to solving problems. In Applejack's case, she has one honesty. You're also going to see the type of pony they are. In Applejack's case, she's an earth pony. And in the text bubble below, you're going to see her requirement. Her requirement uh, allows this card to flip over to gain different abilities. When those requirements are met, the character flips over. Now before I get too ahead of myself, the main character card always starts on the start side facing up. But like I said, once one of the requirements is fulfilled, you flipped it over to the boosted side. Now as you can see, her power that she lends to solving problems goes up to three. She's still an earth pony, but she also gains new abilities. Okay, so the next two cards I'm going to show you are the turn card and the score slider card. Now during your ready phase you can collect a number of action tokens based on the score of the player with the most points as displayed on the score slider card. What that means is at the beginning of each turn you gain a number of action tokens like I said based on the score of the person with the highest score. So in this case we'll just take say if the person with the highest score is four you get three action tokens at the beginning of your turn. If you have nine score, you get four action tokens at the beginning of your turn, and etc. Now, these action tokens are used to do certain things within the game. If you guys have ever played the card game Magic and Gathering, this is kind of like the like a mana cost. Now, like I said, each action you do requires action tokens. If you look on the turn card, it fully displays uh, what you can do and how much action tokens this costs. 
You could pay one action token to draw a card, one action token to play a troublemaker card, pay two action tokens to move a character um, around the board. I'll go into that more a little bit later. And two action tokens to ready your character once they were frightened. Alright, so the next card I'm going to show you guys are friend cards. Friend cards are used to solve different problems and defeating troublemakers within the game. Now, just like the main character cards, each friend card is going to have a power that lends itself to solving the problems or defeating the troublemakers, as I mentioned before. It also is going to have a type. Cherry Jubilee is the Earth Pony. And it's also going to have an effect written in the text bubble below. In this case, Cherry Jubilee's effect is this card gets plus one power for every resource on it. Now, unlike the main character cards, the friend cards kind of have like a summoning cost. Now, if we go back to Magic the Gathering as a reference, this is more like a, like a mana cost. In Cherry Jubilee's case, it's going to take one action token to summon her to the field. Now, in some cases, you're going to come across friends that require a little more uh, effort to summon to the field. In this case, we have Granny Smith. Just like Cherry Jubilee, she has a power that will lend itself to solving different problems, type, and effect per her card. But unlike Cherry Jubilee, she has it takes a little bit more to summon her to the field. As you can see, it'll take two action tokens to summon her to the field, but also one honesty power. What that means is I cannot summon Granny Smith to the field if Cherry Jubilee was not already there. Cherry Jubilee would have to be on the field for me to summon Granny Smith. Now, say I want to summon this card. This is Professor Nye, another friend card. But what's different about this card is it's a magic character. Just like Cherry Jubilee and Granny Smith, Professor Nye has a power that will lend itself to solving problems. It'll also have a summoning cost and a type and effect. But unlike Professor Nye, Again, he'll take one action token to summon to the field, but it will also require one magic character to be on the field before him. That means if I have Cherry Jubilee or Granny Smith on the field, I cannot summon Professor Nye because Granny Smith and Cherry Jubilee are not magic-based characters. They are honest-based characters. So the next thing I'm going to show you guys is what happens when a character becomes exhausted. There's going to be certain cards in the game that will have the text that says exhaust target character, exhaust friend card. And when that happens, you're going to turn a friend card on its side and that would make the character exhausted. Now, what this really means is when a character is exhausted, they do not lend their power to solving problems or defeating uh, troublemakers, or uh, pr it also prevents you from summoning new friend cards. Now, as before, I have Granny Smith, and I would like to summon her to the field. As always, it takes two action tokens to summon her to the field, but also one power of honesty. Now, if Cherry Jubilee is exhausted, I cannot use her to summon Granny Smith because. Granny uh, Cherry Jubilee has been exhausted. I would have to wait for Cherry Jubilee to become unexhausted before I can summon Granny Smith to the field. So the next type of card I'm going to show you guys are event cards. Now this event card just happens to be called Double Check the Checklist. And just like friend cards, they have a certain requirement that needs to be met for them to be played on the field. Now, in this case, Double Check the Checklist has a requirement of one action token and a least uh, magic in the power of three. What that means is I would at least need enough magic friends on the field that add up or exceed the number of three. Event cards also have a power that will lend itself to something, but unlike friend cards, this number five it does not lends itself to solving problems. This lends itself to uh, ending or conquering face-offs, which I will get more into later on in the video. Now, just like friend cards, each event card has a text box with text below. And written in bold, 
will be uh, when you can play the card. Now, in this case, double check the checklist can only be played in the main phase of the game. Now, if you're in the main phase of the game and you play this card, you just simply do whatever the card says. In this case, it says look at the top three cards of your deck and put them in any order. Simple as that. Okay, so the next type of card I'm going to show you guys are resource cards. Now, just like every other card in the game, it's going to have a summoning cost. In this case, it's going to take one action token and at least a power of two in magic. It's also going to have a power that will lend itself towards face-offs only, just like uh, event cards. Like I said, I'll get into face-offs a little bit later on in the video. Now, resource cards are cards that you play and you attach them to other cards. If you look in the text bubble below, it's going to tell you what you can attach resource cards too. In this case you attach this card on a problem. Now other cards are going to say attach the or play on a friend or play on a problem or you know it's always going to say what uh, what it has to be played on. For some reason if the resource card does not say what it has to be played on it's played in your home area and that's where the effect takes place. Now the effects of the resource cards are written below. In this case, uh, this one is played on a problem, and when you win a face-off at this problem, gain one action token. So the next type of card I'm going to show you guys are Troublemaker cards, and Troublemaker cards are always played on your main phase, and they require one action token to be played. Now, during your main phase and you actually play a Troublemaker card, they are always played face down, like so and they remain face down until their next troublemaker phase now during the next troublemaker phase that is when they are flipped face up like so and that is when you want to read the text of each troublemaker card because each troublemaker card will have different effects that activate at different times some effects activate when they're flipped face up some effects activate when the troublemaker is defeated to defeat a troublemaker you're going to have to beat their power in this case the yellow power sprite has a power of four and once a troublemaker is defeated you earn one point now before when I said troublemaker cards are always played on the main phase they are always played right next to a problem and they are attached to that one particular problem until they are defeated so the last type of card I'm going to talk about are problem cards. Now these are the cards that are kind of like the main focus of the game. These are the cards that you're going to be attaching your friends to. These are the cards you're going to be basically kind of fighting over. Now each problem card is different with various different effects. And these effects activate at different times. For this card called Avalanche, this card has an effect of when a player confronts this problem, that player's opponent must discard a card. So, like I said, each problem is different effects, so not one problem is always the same. Now, as you can see on the problem cards, there's various numbers on the upper and the lower part of uh, the card. Now, the your, your effect is always going to be facing you. Your opponent's is always going to be facing your opponent's. Now, like I said, you're going to be attaching your friend cards to each problem. And each problem kind of has a cost or a requirement that you have to meet to solve that problem. In this case, for the Avalanche card, it's going to take one, or, I mean, two honesty power and two magic power. That would mean I would need maybe Granny Smith and maybe blue moon since one has two honesty and the other one has two magic for my opponent they simply have a number of six what that means is they can have um, anything they can have six uh, honesty six magic six friendship six uh, loyalty anything they have will work as long as it, they have six of that um, value but for you you're always going to need um, certain requirements. So, now when you have or when you meet a requirement to solve a problem, you're going to get a point. 
Now, like I said eat at the beginning of the video, your main goal in the game is to get 15 points before your opponent. When you solve a problem, you get a point. There's my point. Now, if you also look on the problem card, you're going to see another number. A bonus number. If you happen to be the first person to solve the problem, you get bonus points. So, say I was the first person to solve this problem, because I have two honesty and two magic. That means I get the one point for solving the problem, and I would get the bonus points for, do it, for solving it first. So, I would get a score of three. Okay, so now that I explained uh, what all the cards look like and what they all do, now it's time to actually uh, play the game. Now you're going to set up the game just like so, like I did in the beginning of the video. You're going to have each player's deck, each player's main character, and a problem deck for each player. Now each player will draw six cards from their deck. And then you will decide who goes first by either flipping a coin, rolling a die, or just simply you can go first. Now, once you decide uh, who goes first and you have your six cards in your hands, you're going to flip over the top card of each of the problem decks, just like so. And that's when you're going to apply any effects that happen when they are revealed. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to explain to you guys is the different phases uh, that happen during the game. Now, the first phase of the game is called a ready phase. This is when you would draw a card from your deck, unexhaust any exhausted characters that you have on the field, and that's when you would add one action token to yourself. Normally, you would add one token uh, per turn, but this does vary depending on the score of the highest player. Uh, as example, if the score of the highest player is 8, you get 4 action tokens at the beginning of your turn. You can look at your score slider card for uh, the different examples of tokens earned per turn and depending on their scores. Now since I am going first, I do not draw a card from my deck. I unexhaust all my exhausted characters. Since uh, this game just started, I don't have any. But I do add the one action token to my token pool. So the next phase of the game is called the troublemaker phase. This is when, uh, if you own any troublemakers on the field, this is when you would flip them up and put them next to the problem that they're assigned to. Since we're just starting the game, no player will have any troublemakers in play, so we just simply uh, skip this phase in the game at this moment. Okay, so the next phase in the game is called the main phase. In this phase, this is basically what uh, where everything happens. This is where you play friends, this is where you play troublemaker cards, um, you can view the turntable card for uh, different examples. Now, like I said, during your main phase, you could play friends. Now, to play friends cards, you're going to, um, if you go to your turntable card for reference, you're going to spend one action token to play a friend. Once you play a friend, you simply put it right next to a problem. Now, just for an example, say I have two action tokens. I can spend those two action tokens to simply move a friend to um, another problem. I can move a friend to home. Or I can move a friend to a problem from home. I could also spend those two action tokens to move my main character from a home. Or move my main character from a problem to another problem. Now, I could also use that one action token to play a Troublemaker. Now, just like I have already mentioned, to play Troublemakers, you spend the one action token. And you put a Troublemaker face down next to that problem. And that Troublemaker will not flip up until the next Troublemaker phase. Now, the last option you have during your main phase is you can spend one action token to simply draw a card from your deck. Now, the last phase in each player's turn is called the scoring phase. In this phase, this is when you determine if you solve a problem or not, and you gain each score uh, accordingly. Now, to solve a problem, you have to check the different requirements at the bottom of each um, problem card and see if you meet those requirements. We'll just take this problem, for example. It take, requires 
one um, magic power and one power other than magic. In this case, I only have one power of magic on my comet tail, so I would not solve that problem. But if I had comet tail and apple cobbler, I would solve the problem because I have one magic power and one honest power, which fulfills the requirement. Now, if I fulfilled the requirement of a problem, I would gain a score of 1. If I was the first person to solve that problem, I would get my 1 score, plus I would get the bonus point, which is also 1, which would give me a score of 2. Now, for the player that goes uh, second, it's basically you just follow the same uh, formula, but in this case, the second player does draw a card from their deck, like so. They exhaust any uh, exhausted characters they have on the field. At this point, we have none. But then they also get one action token. Now, since they're going second, uh, they get a an additional action token. And from here, they just simply go into the next phase, which is the troublemaker phase, where they, f they would flip up any troublemakers they played on a previous turn. Since this is only the second turn in the game, obviously there'll be no troublemakers yet. And then we move on to the main phase for player two. Again, this is where they spend one action token to either draw a card, spend one action token to uh, summon a friend to the field, and they can put it on either problem that they wish. We'll spend one action token. And we'll just simply put uh, Sweetie Sunshine on this problem. Like so. Now since they have one action token uh, remaining, they could basically summon another friend if they have it. And we could summon another Sweetie Sunrise to another problem. Okay, so now that it's my uh, opponent's turn again, I want to show you an example of getting more additional action tokens per turn, depending on the score of the highest player. Now, like I said in the previous turn, my score is 3. Now, normally each player would get one action token per turn, but since the score of the, the highest player is 3, which is me, if you check your scoring slider card, and you check that the highest score is three, um, each player will get actually three additional action tokens. So on my opponent's turn, since my score is three, they would actually get three action tokens according to the score slider card, as I've already mentioned. So in this case, my, uh, my opponent has four action tokens to spend on whatever they desire. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens when uh, two players uh, happen to solve a problem at the same exact time. Again, this happens, uh, solving a problem, this happens during the scoring phase of the game. And when you solve a problem, again, you would add up the, uh, you, meet, you check if you meet the requirements of each problem. So again, I have one magic and one of anything else. And I have one magic and one honesty point on, for my friends that are attached to that problem. I met the requirements to solve that problem. Now, once I solve that problem, just like before, I gain one point for solving the problem. Now we check if my opponent also solves the problem. They have one, two, and one of the loyalty points. Their requirement for solving the problem is a four of anything, so they also meet the requirements for solving that problem. When this happens, we enter something that uh, is called a face-off, as I already mentioned uh, previously in the video. Now, what happens here is each player will take the top card of their library and flip it over. And you would look at the power of each card and add it to the, the power that you already have. So for me, I would have a 5. My opponent would have a 3. So I would take the 2 and the 5, add it up to 7. My opponent will take the four he already has, take a three, also he would get seven points. Now we tied. In this uh, case we would flip over another card for each player. And again we would simply just add up the power of every card attached to that problem. So I would take the seven I already have, add the two that I just flipped over, give me a power of nine. My opponent will take his power of 7 and add the, the 1 that he just flipped over, which is a power of 8. 
So in this face-off, I win. Now when you win a face-off, you actually gain the bonus point of that problem. So I would just simply add that to my score that I already have. Now once you once the face-off is over, you basically just a, do a cleanup. Uh, every card that has been flipped over, you just simply take the cards and put them at the bottom of their respected decks in any order that you wish. Any friends attached to their problem, they would go back to the home area. And the problem that has been uh, solved by both players would simply go be flipped over face down and placed at the bottom of the pile. And a new problem will be flipped over. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys is a double face-off or a double problem solving. And what this is, means is you basically solve two problems at the same time. Now, as you can see, I have met the requirements for this problem. Again, we're just going back. I have one magic and one honesty to solve this problem. But over here, I also have three magic and three honesty to solve this problem, which is a requirement that has a six. Now, in that case, since I'm solving all two problems at the same time, I would get the two points for solving both problems. And since I'm solving this problem for the very first time, I would get uh, a, the bonus score of three. If this problem has already been solved uh, from a previous turn, I would not get the, the bonus point. Now, again, we check if my opponent also solves a problem. Now, my opponent does not solve this problem, because it does not meet the requirement, but my opponent does has enough to solve this problem. This would, again, lead us into a face-off. But this time, it would be a double face-off, since I've solved both problems already. So, what happens here is basically we add up the power of every single card attached to both problems. Okay? So... In this case, I have a 1, 2, 2, 1, and a 3. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. My opponent would have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have 8. My opponent has 6. Again, just like a single face-off, we would take up the top card of our libraries and flip them face over. And we would add up the power. I have a 2. My opponent has 1. Again, we would add up all the powers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I have 10. My opponent has 7. In that case, I win the face-off. Now, when I win a double face-off, I actually... Um, gain the bonus point of the lowest of the problem. So in this case, but this problem has a bonus score of 3, this problem has a bonus score of 1, I would gain the 1. Now just like after all that, we do the simple cleanup. All cards that were flipped over go at the bottom of their respected decks. Any friend that has been summoned to the field go back to their respected homes. We will take both problems that were solved, put them at the bottom of their respected problem decks, and we would flip up new problems. Just like so. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys is how to deal with uh, troublemakers in the game. Now, at the beginning of your turn, just like always, you would draw your card. You would add the one uh, action token to your action token pool. Again, you would add more action tokens depending on the score of the highest player if it's further on in the game. And then we go into the troublemaker phase. Since my opponent has summoned a troublemaker on their previous turn, they put it face down. But since it's your troublemaker phase now, we would flip that troublemaker up, like so. And we would check the text of the troublemaker. 
because like I s said earlier in the video, some troublemakers have the effect when they're revealed or flipped face up. Uh, if they have that uh, certain effect, that would happen right now. And then after we checked uh, if it has an effect or not, uh, I could decide to fight the troublemaker or not. If I do not decide to fight the troublemaker, nothing happens. But if I do decide to fight the troublemaker, we go into a face-off. Now, this face-off is just like any other face-off uh, um, in the video. We would add up the power of all the friends attached to that problem. So I have one, two, three, giving me a power of three. And my the troublemaker has a power of four. Okay, just like before, we would flip over the top card of each library. And I have an additional two. So two plus three will give me a power of five. My opponent has also flipped over a card with a power of two. That power gets added to the troublemaker's power, giving the troublemaker a power of six. So in this case, I lose the battle. Now, when you lose a battle with a troublemaker, I have to just pick one friend uh, attached to a problem and send them home. Okay? Just like so. Now, we'll just use an example um, that we'll just say in this, in this example that I actually won the battle with the troublemaker. If I win the battle with the troublemaker, what happens then is I would check the, um, the troublemaker card for their points. I would get the, the point for defeating the troublemaker, which is one. And that would go to my points. So that brings my points up from like a 7 to an 8. Sometimes they're like if Troublemaker had a point of like points of 2, then it would go to like 7 to 9, you know, example, example. And again, we would check the Troublemaker again because like I said, they have some effects uh, that happen when a Troublemaker is defeated. When, um, if that's the case, that, this is when you would do it now. After the effect of the resolved troublemaker, you would simply discard the troublemaker into your discard pile of the owner. All cards, uh, all like event cards, resource cards that were evolved in the face-off go at the bottom of the deck, as I already mentioned early in the video. And all and the friends remain on that problem. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys is what happens when you want to solve a problem that has a troublemaker attached to it. Normally you cannot solve any problem that has a troublemaker attached on it by either player. What this means is during our troublemaker phase we had a choice to fight the troublemaker or not. If we decide to fight the troublemaker we will go into the face off as I already shown you previously in this video. If we do not fight the troublemaker it would simply go into our main phase. You know we do all the stuff in the main phase and then it'll go into the scoring phase. Normally in the scoring phase this is when we would solve the problem. But in this instance this particular problem has a troublemaker attached to it. Now since I decided not to fight the troublemaker and defeat it during the troublemaker phase I cannot solve the problem. Even though I do meet the requirements of the problem. Now, this also works against my opponent. My opponent cannot solve the problem either if a troublemaker has been attached to that problem. The troublemaker must be removed or must be defeated from the problem before the problem can be solved by either player. Okay, guys, so that's basically my overview, in-depth uh, review, how to play the My Little Pony trading uh, card game. Uh, my overall thoughts is... This is actually a pretty fun game. I played a few games with a few uh, friends of mine. They enjoyed it. And you don't have to be uh, like a My Little Pony fan to enjoy this game. I have many friends that don't like My Little Pony. And I kind of force them to play this game. And they like Magic the Gathering. They like Yu-Gi-Oh! So I force them to sit down and play this game. And they actually really, really enjoyed it. They think this is a very good game. So, like I said, you don't have to be a fan of My Little Pony to enjoy this card game. So, I think this is a very good, in-depth card game. Very well built. The rules may be a little complicated at first, but the more you play, uh, the more you learn them, the more you, you know, the more you just get into the game. You know, it's, like I said, it's a very good game. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, like I said, overview or how to play uh, the My Little Pony trading card game. So, um... 
I want to say thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you guys are interested in this game, I, w I would say give it a try. I really mean that. So, thank you guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll catch you later.